Test one, test one, test one, two, three, test, test. Test one, two, three, test, test. That works out real well, doesn't it? Uh, I like being nervous and being alive. Right away. Yeah. Okay. No, I get it done now. You all done it? No. Shouldn't be. We got two minutes, and it's not on the screen. It's on my screen. It's on my screen back here, and it's coming again. We got two minutes. Just be aware, anything you say can be. Can we be used against you in the court of law?
like to welcome everybody to Let's Talk Racing tonight. We have Matt Mullins and Kevin Adams uh, in the foreground here. And we're going to be having with us uh, Cameron Patrick doing a call in, or we're going to call him actually. We're going to also have Terry O'Connell showing up here shortly. And we'll also be talking with uh, Brett Moffitt from the K&N series that's going to be running at Langley Speedway this weekend. How you been doing today, Matt? I am doing great. If this computer would cooperate. Oh. See, Why is, is yeah. it this thing? Oh, it does it to me every time. Technology, a wonderful thing if only when it works, right? It's beautiful. I tell you what, you, you, you go outside. You gotta, have, you gotta have that last killer cigarette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, gotta he do it. Back here and gotta says, do it. I hope we're not gonna be racing for hope for you one day. That'd be a terrible thing, wouldn't it? <laughs> a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> it's my last vice. <laughs> I might want to get a second reference on that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and Kevin, you're going to be talking about your uh, charity and hope, I reckon you, as we would say. Um, first of all, let me tell you what we're about and, and how it came to be. Uh, my name's Kevin Adams. I'm with Adams Sports Marketing. I was involved in racing about 14 years ago, and I got out of it when my mom passed away. I used to love to go to the track with her, and when she passed away, I left. I was involved with the 05 car at that time with Key Motorsports back in that day. Uh, um, at that particular race, we had Tommy Alice driving for us at Charlotte with three laps to go, and a piece of debris came off the car and cut a tire, and that was in actually the oil line now I think about it, but uh, that was the last time I stepped foot on the track uh, till this, this year. And the reason why I came back to racing was because uh, my neighbor's son had been diagnosed with leukemia um, March the 9th, uh, 2010. And it was one of those things that was hard for me to deal with. I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to accept it. Uh, it this family is just an all-American family, an all-American boy. And I just felt like nobody knew the face of childhood cancer. Everybody knew somebody that might have it, but I felt like he needed to have some recognition because he's such a decent young man. Hmm. He's a good stand-up young man. His and, family's good folks. And I think there's a website related to that. Yeah, there is. It's www.matthewhair.com. Matthew spelled M-A-T-T-H-E-W-H-E-A-R-E uh, dot com. Uh, we're, we're getting ready to found a, a 5013C charity um, involved with uh, making awareness to childhood cancer, and Matthew's going to be the face of that. We want to bring the, the fight to the forefront, and Matthew's the right kind of person to have that done. So uh, with God's blessing, we're working on it. No. Yeah, that's one of the times he sat in one of the cars. He's been out to the track about four times now. Um, mm -hmm. We're involved with three race teams right now, uh, two in the modified division. The first one I'd like to bring recognition to is the 03 car with Randy Monroe Jr. driving it. Uh, this is a a young boy that also inspired me to get back into racing. He's coming from dirt uh, to asphalt, so everybody knows what a learning curve that can be. Sabatini Auto Sports, Automotive Sports is uh, involved and owns that car. Bobby Sabatino was involved in racing for a long time, got away from it. He's the crew chief and owner on the car. And uh, uh, Randy is, is driving the car. Uh, we've had a little bit of tough racing luck, but uh, Every asphalt track that he's been on so far, he's finished in the top 10, which I think is a testament to uh, Randy's driving ability, but he has only been in the same car twice. Um, the second car we are associated with is Cameron Patrick's car, uh, his legend car. We've been on that one time, and uh, we're signed up to do a couple of races, I think three races on his modified car. Um, I just can't say enough about Cameron and his dad, uh, Mike Patrick, they're stand-up folks. As you know, uh, uh, Cameron's had a lot of success. He's a four-time legend track champion from 2004-2007. He was uh, Langley Speedway's Modified Rookie of the Year in 2008. Um, he's had four straight wins, so I don't want anybody to think I'm a bandwagon jumper, but uh, we got on the car, and I hope we haven't brought bad luck. He didn't lose the last race. Nobody won it, but we did get rained out a little bit when we got on the car. But uh, Cameron's good folks, and he asked me to mention a couple of folks. Uh, Brett Hamilton is, is the one that's the chassis that he's driving. It's Barnett Machine Shop has done four good years of engines for the folks, and CMG Motorsports does their fabrication work there out of Richmond. 
So I just want to give a shout out to them. And the latest addition to the Racing for Hope family out at Langley is uh, the Butch Brett Racing Team, uh, the number 12 car driven by Dean Shiflett in the late model division. Uh, our first race with them is going to be on the 25th. How the car will be skinned out this week. Uh, can't say enough about Butch and his crew and Dean. Uh, the thing that attracted me about that car was the fact that they got torn up the last late model race, rebuilt the car in less than a week, and was a top five finisher. And that kind of reminded me about Matthew. You know, some days Matthew has a tough week with chemo, like most kids, uh, they're going through something like that. But you know, the next day you see him, he's up, around, running, smiling, and just puts a smile on your face. He's the kind of kid that uh, you just can't have a bad day when you're around him. And, uh, and that just reminds me of that team. Uh, so they're, they're the newest addition to the Racing for Hope family out there at Langley. And um, I'm just real excited about this upcoming week. Uh, I want to say a shout out to the fan club out there with Jim Hicks. They're doing a 50-50 raffle for MatthewHair.com this week, and we're real excited about that. We encourage everybody to participate. Yeah, yeah please yeah, go yeah. ahead and, and show the number 12 car. And we're going to be on the hood of that car as well as both sides of both quarter panels, and uh, just can't say enough about Butch and his team for letting us come on board with that, that car. We're really looking forward to that. We were talking about a couple of guys you got hanging out with you and doing all these good things. Let's go ahead and get one of our favorite people on there. Hey, Cameron. Hey, how you doing? Good, Cameron. How you doing? Not a wonderful day. You're an easy interview, Kevin, because you just kind of, i just been sitting here getting my little notes done, and you just kind of took over, and I like that. All right, Cameron, four wins this year already. You're 4-0. Um, and, and my guess is you would have been 5-0 and oh Saturday, but rain didn't help you matters much. How's the car coming along? Uh, the car coming along great. You know, I mean, we're right now working on uh, repairing some of the damage from the uh, incident that happened last Saturday before the rain. But uh, it didn't get to any of the major parts, so we're hoping it'll come back together and be as strong as it was before the incident. Um, I didn't get to see what happened. <laughs> You don't want to ask me. <laughs> um, can you tell me? Can you tell us what happened? Um, well, Sean Beluzo had just got underneath Chris to, uh, and was bad on him for first. And uh, I was hoping to follow suit. And as soon as uh, you know, I stuck my nose in there. It, uh, Chris was trying to block, you know, apparently from my end, and he ran me a little low. And I had not gotten the car down low enough, and so just. You know, the intersection between two cars are going for the same spot. You know, we end up uh, rubbing my right front on his left rear, and, of course, which spun him out. And then uh, I got hit from behind, and it drove the left front into his car. And basically, that's where the damage I have on my car is. So just kind of one of them racing deals. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's trying to protect his spot. And, of course, I'm trying to move forward not to let Sean get away. And, you know, the only really downside is, you know, you know the rain came as soon as it did, but considering it was on the 17th lap of the race, you know, it was a little soon in my book to be playing that hardball, considering that he had so many laps left that he could have let me go and then tried to work back past me. Yeah, I, I, I got you, but so, sometimes that's short of a race. And you guys were running twins that night, right? No, it was no, that was just a single 50-lapper, right? Yeah, like miles were that night. Uh, twins uh, this Saturday. The twins this Saturday. Right. So, are you all ready to go? You're going to be running with the K&N series, which I, I think is a pretty big deal. Um, you looking forward to it? Yeah, definitely. I, I love seeing the uh, the K&N series. Those are some awesome cars, and they usually put on a really good show. And I know we run before they do, and then we run again after they do, according to the schedule I saw on uh, Langley's website. So, yeah, yeah, you guys will run before that, and then you'll run after them too. Correct. Okay. Big question here. This is the critical one, and I hope you've had time to think about it. How did you get the name Taco? Goodness, here we go. Here's something from a long time ago. Well, uh, when I got out of high school, I decided I wanted to go and be a car mechanic. So we moved to a little town called Biloxi, Mississippi. And I went to a community college that was about an hour away on automotive because they didn't have it in the high school that I was in. So my second year into the program, I started working at a garage. It was called Dave's Garage, and it was kind of a place where down there you had rednecks. And I was basically road man on a total pole. I was their lackey. I did everything and anything they ever wanted to do. 
So, of course, they had an intercom, and any time they needed me, they would jump on the intercom, and it would be, hey, Taco Sombrero, was always what they said. They never said my name, they always said Taco Sombrero, you know. Hey, run to the parts store, hey, come clean my stall. Well, eventually it just got shortened to where they just said, hey, Taco. <laughs> With the intercom. So, and unfortunately, in high school and all, I never earned a nickname. So, I went, I, you know, it was kind of fun, it was kind of different. And so I just kept it, and I've just kind of hung out with it uh, ever since. And ever since, and, and it's caught it's caught on. I, as long as I've known you, I've known Taco. But now it's finally caught on at the racetrack. Yeah, it's been kind of funny because my wife and my kids and all my buddies, they know me as Taco because that's what I go by at work. But then you go to the, the racing world, basically all knows me by my real name. So it's kind of a, an oddball thing to hear somebody at the track call me that. <laughs> Maybe it's time to put it on the car and get everybody involved. <laughs> right, yeah, that's another thing. Is, you know, you want to go and put that on the car, and you're like, well, I don't know if that's really a, you know, racing persona to be having. You know, you'd like to have, you know, uh, something like Fireball or, you know, Smoke, like what Tony Stewart's got, something cool, you know, that uh, you know, maybe I could earn something like that in the racing world. Right. Well, well if- I was going to say, if I won four straight, I, I wouldn't care. Would you call me taco, sombrero, clean my stall, whatever? Who cares? Just call me a winner, right? Uh, well, that's true. You know, I would definitely take it, and I'm certainly going to try to uh, grab a few more wins here. You know, it would be nice to run the table, but we all know the odds of that are slim. You know, in the NASCAR world, you know, if you win 10% of the races you're in, you're you're a hero, and I've already surpassed that for the season, so... You know, happy with the finishes we got right now. Well, you're batting a thousand. I mean, there's no other place to go, but down. There is it, uh, but between Sean and and uh, Chris, you know, they're trying really hard, and you know, Mike Rudy's now showing some big speed, and you know, they don't want to let me win. Uh, they're fussing at me about you know not wanting to share, and I told them, you know, all these years I've been running behind them, watching them win, they didn't want to share either. Yeah. Uh, and when you look at the way the finishes have been, if if I hadn't been winning, Chris would have won three, and Sean would have won the other one. Yep. So, you know, it wasn't like they were willing to share a whole lot either. Well, I know one thing. Matthew sure is counting on you getting him to victory circle. I can tell you that. Well, I got two chances this Saturday, so I'm definitely dying to put him there. And uh, we're also going to be running the Legends car this Friday at Southside. And uh, I'm going to take the sedan, so Matthew will be on the car with us when we go up there. Oh, so I take it Dad wasn't able to get the rest of the other car together, huh? Well, I'm staring at it, and the motor's in it, and it's, you know, kind of put together, but... He had some other cars he had to work on, and the body, you know, the body's easy to slide on, but he doesn't have any defenders on. And if we don't have it ready to go to go practice tomorrow down at Langley, it's kind of a good point to go and, you know, first day out on the track is race day. It uh, usually doesn't, if you can't run into any problems, that's a bad place to have them. Exactly. Well, that's exciting to know that Matthews could be branching out down in Richmond, so appreciate that effort. Yeah, well, we're hopefully we can take him a whole lot further than that, let everybody see him. Yeah, well, you know what I'm thinking. <laughs> so uh, that's no secret. Uh, I'm definitely along for the ride. We'll try to make his face go as far as we can. Well, Cameron, I just want to tell you I really appreciate your effort. Uh, the, the night you drove the Legend car with Matthew's face on it was just one of the most exciting times for me. Uh, that's the closest I've ever got to victory lane with anything I was associated with. I got the third one time in Orange County, but that was – a long time ago you were probably not even taco then uh, so we'll leave that alone but anyway uh, you saw the excitement on my face and of course Matthew wasn't able to be there that night but I can assure you that Matthew and his grandparents they're in from Georgia they're going to be there he's got family coming from West Virginia and Northern Virginia so it's going to be a big time for Matthew Saturday night so we're looking forward to having him in Victory Circle with your, with your help or one of the other teams, we, we won't be picky or choosy, but we, we would sure like it for if it was Cameron. Uh, I'm certainly going to try hard to put it there. You know, I'm with the Twins, hopefully I can get a good qualifying spot and, and uh, get up front because, you know, not having as many laps, people want to go real fast. And I don't know if I'll get as lucky as I did the other Twin and be able to uh, run Chris down this time. So everybody's a little quicker and not willing to uh, let you go by like they used to. They're uh, a little upset at continuing to win, so they're trying a little harder to stop you. Yeah, well, you're not flying under the radar anymore. I can assure you that. <laughs> yeah, they're coming over asking us for stuff now. And <laughs> yeah, I noticed that the last race, I was thinking maybe you hadn't shouldn't uh, given that big old soft spring to the 48 car. <laughs> yeah, well, I told 
him, uh, you know, I asked him if it worked, and he's like, I'm not going to tell you whether it worked or not. I said, well, obviously I'm not using it because I had it to lend it to you. <laughs> I tell you, that, you know, speaking of that, that's, that's why I decided to bring this cause to the NASCAR family. It's just that the fact, you know, I don't know another sport where you can ask your competitor to let you borrow something so you can beat them. I don't think there's anything out there, and it's not because there's not a whole lot of money involved, because there is a lot of money involved. It's just the kind of people that are associated with NASCAR. Would you agree with that? Well, yeah, and, and, and that's any kind of racing, it's always been that way, and, and I think Cameron can attest to that, too, that you know, you know, you're going to help your competitor out no matter what, because you want to beat him, what he, whether he's got your spring or transmission or whatever, you still want to beat that guy, and you want to have him on that track so you can beat him. Well, when I was a young buck, I didn't know that. And Tommy Ellis was driving the 05 car in Martinsville, and this was 1994. It was about an hour and 15 minutes before start time, and he started the car. This is back before you, when you could touch your car a little bit, you know, right. not, not before they rope it off. But he started the car up, and he didn't like the sound of it. He said, the engine's bad. I said, what do you mean? He said, the engine's bad. I said, well, Tommy, it's an hour and 15 minutes before the race. He said, not my problem. I drive. I said, we don't have an engine hoist. He said, there again, not my not problem. problem. <laughs> I, I drive the race car. So we went over to the Steve Grissom car, the number 20 channel lock car, and we walked over there, and he, I was the youngest, so they made me do it. I walked over there very sheepishly, and I said, uh, would you mind if we borrowed an engine hoist so we can take our poor pathetic engine out and put a new one in so we could win? And they said, sure, come on over here. And that's the day I realized the NASCAR family is a little different breed of cat. Yeah, it, 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 and it's always been that way, and, and Cameron can attest to that. There's been times that there's been people have gotten into re racing incidents and wrecks, and you're over there helping him load his car up, or you know, you know, you're helping him any way you can to get back out on that track. So, and I, I think Cameron can attest to that too. Oh, I've you know done that many a times helping people to get out there, and like you said, my your goal is to be able to beat them on the track. It, you know, sometimes you wonder if they wreck and you go over and fix their car good enough for them to beat you, then obviously you either told them too much or you weren't that good to start with. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, and that's true, yeah. It's just so fun to beat somebody in a pit. You, know, you, uh, you want to beat them at their best, and if you got to help them get to that point, then you want to do it. You know, and, uh, helping Sean last week is certainly not a problem considering the, the times that we've struggled. He's come over and helped us. He's given us an entire setup. Uh, you know, helped us out any way he could. And, you know, of course, now they're trying to look for the same thing back from us. And, uh, you know, we're, we may not be quite as willing to give as much as he did, but uh, you know, certainly willing to help with any kind of a part we've got uh, to lend. Because you know, I want to beat him at his best. And if I had to give him my own spring to make him run better and still beat him, then that's great. You know, but even if he beat me, I'm not going to walk over and start any of my 600 spring back. You know, it's, obviously, I need to work on my own program the way we look at it. I always liked what Dale Dale Lemons always said. I'm, I'm going to get you to where we can race together. And then you're on your own. <laughs> well, let me tell you, that seems to be still the theme today. Uh, we sponsored the uh, the Hampton Roads Cards Series with in, in Matthew's honor on, uh, on Sunday to bring awareness to those young folks. Our, our theme is we want to start all the way down there and work all the way up. Uh, maybe not to Sunday yet, but at least to Saturday. And... Uh, we were out there, and we happened to meet a young man by the name of Colin Roberts who drives the number 27 car out there. And uh, we negotiated a little quick deal for him, and uh, he, 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 he drove his heart out uh, for Matthew. Uh, because of HIPAA regulations, I can't tell you what happened, but he did have an injury. He did win, didn't speak about the injury till after we left. Uh, he, uh, you know, just that kind of thing. But one thing his dad told me was that there was a young man that came down here and whooped their butt all the time, and they were racing, and the guy spun out when they were running door handle to door handle. Well, I guess, well, maybe not door handle when you're in a go-kart, but the way he tells wheel the story, wheel. Uh, wheel to wheel, there you go. Wheel to wheel, and uh, the young man spun out, and his son pulled over. And so Dad wanted to know what was going on. He said, Dad, I, I don't want to beat him like that. So they lined up for the last two laps, and he beat him. And, you know, that seems to be the theme of it, whether you're 5 or 45 in racing. Can't, uh, Toledo Speedway, three years ago, four years ago, Kenny Schrader spun, was running second and spun the leader out on the white flag lap. And he didn't mean to do it, so he pulled up behind that guy. It was an ARCA race. Pulled up behind him and stopped and, and said, I'm not going to win that way. I wanted to beat him fair and square. Uh, to me, that's, that's racing. I mean, to me, that's yeah. class. Yeah. yeah. 
that's the that's the full meaning. Of and, that. and and that's the kind of sport and family you want to be associated with when you're trying to get a cause out as worthy as Matthews. Yep. I mean, let's you're be exactly honest, because right. cancer affects everybody, young, old, doesn't matter. You know, cancer doesn't know any race or creed or color or religion. But you know, the fact that it's affecting kids, that's the part that really tears me up. Yeah. Yep. And Matthew is just uh, somebody's personal to me, and so. Uh, it's like the old saying, if not me, who? If not now, when? Yep. So. Speaking of class, I'm going to bring this up because i got a modified driver on here. They announced oh. the 2012 Saw NASCAR it. Hall of Fame. Yep. And short tracks finally got some recognition. And I think this was a no-brainer. Cameron, what do you think about putting Richie Evans in that Hall of Fame? Well, uh, unfortunately, I say I don't know who Ricky Evans is. Oh, oh party foul! <laughs> You're well, kidding let me, me. Let me take this one for you, Cameron. He's the driver of the number uh, 61 car. It's the, it was the first number that was ever retired in any NASCAR division. He's an eight-time champion. Uh, while King Richard was winning the the Cup championships, uh, he was winning the modified division. Uh, Richie Evans was the king of the modified tracks. Uh, he was a class act, drove hard, drove the wheels off the car. I can remember in Martinsville one time it was uh, four of them on the last lap, and then the two of them finished uh, across the finish line. And, and all Richie said was, darn it, I was in the hunt. And I said, maybe they won't make it across the line when two of my wheels came off, but darn it, those two cars ahead of me didn't finish. <laughs> That was Richie, though. He could drive the wheels off of it. Probably the best modified short track driver there ever. He has more wins at Martinsville than anybody else. If I'm, if it's either him or Ray Hendrick. Which one has? Richie. Richie, Richie. does. Richie's got more wins at Martinsville than I think anybody by else. Six or seven more at least. It, yeah. it, it's it's a little bit noticeable distance. Yeah. Well, I saw. I, who was the young lady in the audience last night that was representing Richie? Was it his? Uh, I don't know. I I I missed that part. Um, anyway, Kale wasn't there either last night, was he? Kale had back surgery, so he was flat on his back. Oh, was he? Oh, was he really? So I can't can't Cameron. I can't believe you don't know who Richie Evans is. I must be showing my age, I guess. I I don't know. Well, you certainly had enough time to Google him with how long we talked. <laughs> You know, I didn't start, uh, you know, when I started watching NASCAR, it was Taylor Yarbrough, you know, um, Dale Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace, you know, Daryl Waltrip was still in there. You know, I really didn't even know a whole lot about it, you know, back then. I, was, I knew Dad liked Earnhardt, so I had to pick somebody in a Ford to go against him. That was all I did. <laughs> Mark Martin, wasn't it? Uh, he came along a little after that. So. Oh, he had come along, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Guess you had to go with the Wood Brothers back then, right? That well, Yates with Davy Allison. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like anybody else. Cheated there, one. Uh, he was my favorite. One, you know, he was my favorite in the Pontiac, and when he switched to Ford, I really jumped on his bad wagon big then. Who? Rusty Wallace. Oh, Rusty, yeah. Good old Rusty. Good old, yeah, good old Rusty. So to me, he's he was probably not watching, right? The battle with Earnhardt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, I shouldn't say what I was thinking. I get some reports back of some people to watch this at times. <laughs> Always they thought. always put on a good show. He was just he, Cameron brought up about Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt, and that was always a good show. Right. It really was, and I think it, Rusty's going to be in the Hall of Fame soon. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I've got my personal opinions about that, but I always <laughs> thought that he missed an opportunity to drop a Kleenex. I really did. I thought that should have been one of his sponsors back in those days. Do you know what though? <laughs> I, I got Terry over here, and and I'm going to bring this up. Rusty Wallace, <laughs> Jeff Gordon. Um, uh, uh, guys like that, uh, Kenny Irwin was one of them. They were all whiners, okay? But they got what they wanted out of that car. And they, if they didn't want, if they didn't like it, they whined and cried and complained until they got what they wanted. Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch. <laughs> There's another one, Kurt Busch. You know, you know, and hey, if that's what they got to do to win races, that's what they got to do. Okay. Cameron, do you do that? Come on, Terry. Uh, I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not really a whiner, and I didn't think so. You make more than anything, so that doesn't go with Matthew's theme. He's not a whiner either. Matthew's a boy. Well, considering what he's going through, he really can't be a whiner. He's got to have a, a real strong heart to get through what he has. 
I tell you, anybody that could have a bad day and be around that child, uh, they just, they, they've lost touch with reality. Well, this place just got classed up in a hurry, didn't it? I was just Quick. Say, we well, more class in here. Once you get to know me, you'll retract that statement. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Terry O'Connor, Kevin Adams. Nice, nice to meet you. Cameron, we got Terry O'Connell in here with us, too, so. Hey, Kevin, how are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Good. I'm good. We got, we got Taco on the line. We're just going to start calling you taco. We're just going to make it a tradition. Is, that, is it a supreme uh, taco with cheese, lettuce? Oh, you missed that call then, huh? You, yeah. you missed that one. It wasn't as good as that, no, really. So we're just going to leave it alone. <laughs> oh, well. we we got to think of a different story for you there, Cameron. I think it has something to do with he's as fast as Speedy Gonzalez, right? Yep, yep, andale, andale, yeah. Absolutely. I know. <laughs> Put Speedy Gonzalez on there. I mean, smoke coming out. I mean, that's yes, the way we do Karen. it. I see her on here all the time. She yeah. wants to live on here. She does. Now we're She's looking. Got, Karen's got a new tattoo that I did for her. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, the racing gal thing. Yeah. I've seen it. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Poor Kevin. Now you got him lost. I am, but that's oh, okay. We're going to get you lost, and we're going we'll to come right back on, into it. Though, Cameron, you want to hang with us for a little bit, or you got to get going? Oh, well, actually, I'm up here at Dad's, and he's doing retiring on a Legends motor. So I, I came up to help do whatever he wanted, but he's playing with that right now. So I'm just kind of chilling out here, cool. stayed staring at the pool, listening to y'all. <laughs> oh, what a life. The life oh, of a NASCAR driver, right? There you go. Did you say he was laying in, in the, the pool? pool? Are you laying in the pool? No, I'm not in the pool. Just I'm looking oh. at it. I'm here in a chair, you know, because if I move anywhere, then it gets too loud with him running the car in the background. Oh, okay. okay. Could, you, uh, could you text us a photograph of that just to make sure you're not pulling <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, we have Terry O'Connell with us, and and, and we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit. Kevin, hang around because we're gonna talk about Adams Sports Marketing too. Yeah, and and we're gonna say this again. Matthew Hare, H E A R E dot com, is his website. That's right. Go visit it. He's going to be at the races here the next couple of weeks. He's going to be here for the KN. Yep, yeah, he sure will. Okay. He'll be there Saturday night with his family and uh, loud and proud. And we'll have a, a two cars running out there. Um, bring, him, bring him over here to assist you. Know, you know approximately where I'm sitting at. Yep, I sure do. Gourmet we'll Alley around the corner. Yeah, there. not too far from the barbecue, right? right. <laughs> exactly. Not too far at all. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes we are the barbecue out there. Yeah. So. Well, it can get hot enough out there, that's for sure. Mm. Yeah, Matthew's excited about it, so we're excited cool. to get him to victory lane. Yeah, baby. Have you seen that picture? Before? I just now, just now, uh, getting up to that, speed. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, Roger kind of filled me in on it. Was I focusing? Cameron, on what do you think of this mm -hmm. Hall of Fame and who got voted in? I'm gonna ask you this, and then I'm gonna pass this around a little bit. But let's okay. get you to let's ask you. Well, I don't even know who the ones are that were, you know, invoked. I, I haven't heard who the people are. So. Uh, okay, Richie Evans is one. Kale Yarbrough, Daryl Waltrip, Dale Inman, who is Richard Petty's crew chief, and Eddie Wood of the Wood Brothers. Glenwood. Glenwood. Is it Glenn? I'm sorry. That sounds like a pretty good crew to me. You know, I mean, there's so many names going back through the past. You know, they could pick ten names a year, and they and they still wouldn't get everybody. That's true. That's true. You know, when you you know you sit back and think about, okay, well, you know, why isn't Earnhardt already in there? Dale is. He is? Would he make it in the first year? Yeah, Dale Earnhardt made it the first year. Boy, you're just not following this oh now, are you? Oh, my goodness. How embarrassing. Oh, yeah. First oh, Richie Evans. Yeah. 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 I got a modified driver who doesn't know Dale's in the Hall of Fame and doesn't know who Richie Evans is. What is okay. this? Uh, He's concentrating. Look, you have to start hanging out you gotta with get, us, buddy. Get away from the pool. Get to the track. <laughs> uh, oh, my. Uh, you might as well start talking football. If you're going to talk Hall of Fame, I wouldn't know who any of those old people are either. <laughs> Well, now football, I, I got yeah on that too. Yeah, they don't carry a whole lot of news inside that that race car, do they? You're just in there concentrating about Total turning. Focus, That's right. right. That's what we want to talk about. How, how focused he is. Turn left. Turn well, left. Hummers, right. you know who's going to be in the K and N series? You know, it, we got Wallace coming up there. who's supposed to be strong. You know, you got. Chase Elliott's going to be there. You know, those are the kind of people you're supposed to be talking to with somebody young like me. Well, Robert Johnson's going to be there. Junior Johnson's son's going to be there. And they lowered their age just about two months before the start of the season. Anybody catch that? Wow. Oh, <laughs> knew, that, knew that was coming. Yeah, well, I, I couldn't. They lowered it down to 16, though. No, I think. 15. 
15? Just, and, and, and Mr. Elliott's son just happens to be 15. And uh-huh. so they had to scramble for some cars, and they got they got a good car. I think they got a fast car. Yeah, absolutely. They got a real quick car. That's so. a, that's a lot gonna of great, it's going to be a yeah, It's going to be a and competitive <laughs> and entertaining event. It's going to be interesting. And we're going to talk to Brian Moffitt, Brett Moffitt, and he drives for Michael Walter Brayson oh, in awesome. the K&N series. Awesome. We're going to awesome. talk to him a little bit. Cool. And about now, actually, you think he heard me? About now, Doc. Seven <laughs> thirty. Nothing like live internet TV. We need a taser, just a taser, Doc. With it. You know, it's funny when you see these kids named, and you see them at the track, and they're already walking around with major sponsors on their uh, suits. That make you sick. Years old. Yeah, Casey uh, Elliott's in there, or Chase Elliott, I'm sorry, is walking around with Hendrix on him already. And you look oh, at Wallace sick. and Gresham and all of them, and they're walking around with Gibbs racing on them. And they don't even know what a real sponsor is. You know, when Kevin came on board talking to me, you know, as far as being a sponsor, and I'm like, you don't even know what to ask for. You know, you- he's thanking me for grabbing him, and I'm looking at him like, you know, I don't know what to do. And these kids already are dealing with huge sponsors. Let me tell you a story. This is kind of funny. I walked up to Cameron and I said, uh, I would really like to get on your car and, and, and sponsor you. And I said, do you have any sponsors? He said, no. And uh, we got to chit-chatting and I told him that I'd been around for a while and I'd done this before and I've had some good experience and some bad experience. He said, well, one thing I can tell you is I wouldn't treat you bad because I've never had a exper- uh, sponsor, so I wouldn't know how to treat one bad. So. That's it. It's uh, always the first time for Yeah, yeah I think it's exciting when you get on board with a team that's really appreciative and uh-huh. it's a class act right. like the Patrick mm-hmm. family. I mean, they're just wonderful folks, uh, mm-hmm. and they've gone out of their way. I mean, they came up to us. We had a couple of buttons with Matthew's face on there, and they just demanded them. We had to take them right off our clothes right there and hand them to him, and that wasn't enough. He wanted to drive and wasn't going to drive until Matthew's picture was painted on the dashboard of the car. So we had to scramble around with duct tape and everybody wanted stickers. And I, you know how it goes, you never have what you need at the racetrack. I don't care if it's a 600 pound right front spring or a sticker to go on somebody's dashboard, you're just missing it. So anyway, Cameron was nice enough to put everything on and he went out on the track and drove his heart out. So we're grateful awesome. for that. Awesome. And Cameron drives his heart out every race. I gotta give him that. He's always been a tough competitor. Cool. That's good. Be tough, but not uh, not mean or over aggressive, I guess. Like Matthew, tough. The kind of tough that just keeps up and doesn't know any different. You just wake up every day because that's all you know how to do. You can't complain because it's just life. That's right. Right. You know, Dad's always instilled to me. Started, you know, you, you know, you can drive hard and, and go get what you got to do, but you don't have to be dirty. He didn't. He's never believed in you had to be dirty to get the job done. Well, that's cool. Right. Other than turning wrenches, right? Well, yeah, but that comes with the territory. <laughs> yeah, that's called creative engineering. So I don't want to—I right. don't want anybody to think that NASCAR is a completely clean sport, no, no, right? No, no. <laughs> well, we got some stories. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got some stories. Oh, yeah. so. All right, all right. Um, what are we doing, Doc? Are we just gonna sit here and BS <laughs> some more? We're gonna have fun. We're just gonna keep right on going. I got—I got a message from uh, Caitlin a little while ago from Michael Waltrip. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brett Moffitt had uh, some personal stuff he had to take care of and couldn't call in tonight, but he does want to call in next week, and so. Well, maybe, maybe Michael could call maybe, in. Maybe. I could ask him where that piece of debris is that came off his car and cut my oil line um, in '94. Maybe he's probably got. Mm. That was fortuitous at that time. Or ask him. Oh, Tommy was coming. Right. You know Tommy Ellis. He was. He. You know. He only knew one way, and that was to the front. And, and I don't know if he shared the same theory that Mr. Patrick. And, both the Patrick family did. Probably not. <laughs> no, Probably. not at all. Mm-hmm. Tommy had one way. It was either going to be first or he was going to take it off the track in pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, that didn't always work Checkers out so well. Checkers or wreckers. Oh, Checkers or wreckers. Don't like that one. No. Not from a <laughs> owner perspective. But yeah. <laughs> if Curtis is out there, Curtis. <laughs> Hello, bud. Love you mean it. Yeah. Curtis Key? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's been out there living the dream for a long time. As he told me, he's paid for enough. What was the word he used? Um, chuckles and giggles or something like that? Yeah. That's so, funny. so, you know how it goes. It takes a lot of money to go fast. How fast uh, you want to go? Yeah, hmm? I bet you. Uh, I wonder. I just wonder if Michael Waltrip's having to write audio check right now. Uh, I don't know. An audio check? Audi. Audi. Audi? I thought that was a Ferrari. Well, 
the Audi's one that got totaled. It was the Ferrari they were driving. That oh clipped. yeah, that was his. That was <laughs> his that car was at Le Mans. Deal, yeah. That was a I've frightening heard wreck. I've Ferraris are fast. Well, he they clipped a, a GT a GT car clipped him. You know the Audi was coming down, yeah. most line straight, clipping his lights that were going that they were laughing. Michael's co-driver, his actually his partner in crime in his business, and he turned into the to the Audi as it went by at two hundred and thirty miles per hour. And off into the weeds. Yeah, hit a tire barrier. Yeah, Did you see that, Cameron? Yeah, I, I saw it the replay of it. Did they have a Hans device on? Oh, oh yeah, yeah oh, they yeah. all got. Yeah. Yeah, and we were just talking yeah, about that here a couple I'm doing, hours. I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing that series, and it's yeah. like, you got to have. It, it, it's insane what they make you wear. Yeah. It destroyed the car. I mean, you got to go. It was a, what's his name in the car? Um, what's his name? Starts with a C. His business partner. Not with Michael Walter. No, it was and, uh, and, uh, um, Rockefeller. Rockefeller was in the car. Yeah, the uh, yeah the Who other was guy, in the Audi? The, well, Rockefeller was in the second Audi that crashed into Michael and them's car. The other Audi that crashed earlier in the event was um, I can't think of the guy's name. Anyway, he's the one that crashed and almost got up into the. He's he, yeah, he's the one that's won like six or seven yeah. of the Le Mans. Right. He he runs all. So the they time. totaled two Audis within six hours. I don't know and why. Somebody, ouch, that. that's a million expensive. Bucks a, pop, yeah. a million bucks a pop. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah every totally bit of it. Totally destroyed. Well, I'm glad I'm not footing that bill. I know, I know. It's like, oh my God. But they won the other, but they won uh, Limo, so with the third car. So. Well, I guess if you've got enough money for three, you can afford to wreck the first two. I guess they'll just do commercials about how safe their cars are. Well, that'd be tough to argue at those <laughs> speeds, right? I know it, I know. It was a big. It was big, though. Yeah, it was good. Cameron, you ever had any hard wrecks? Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. I have to say, some people got it on video. Uh, <laughs> Is it a YouTube <laughs> viral sensation? <laughs> oh my God. At the Legends Nationals last October, they were right there at Langley. I unfortunately clipped two cars and uh, rolled it uh, going into turn one mm. three or four times. So that I can't say it hit hard. I don't remember a whole lot of it anyway. <laughs> So I can't say that was probably the hardest hit I've ever had, but it was probably the worst wreck I've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. How'd your wife take that? Oh, well, she didn't find out until I got home, and she never worries about it in me anyway. She knows i got a loose nut to be driving anyway. <laughs> well, <All right>. she, <laughs> uh, I, she I saw it. I was sitting in the pace car. Right. Oh, that's a good And piece. I saw that wreck, and there was right. two scary crashes out there, and Cameron was in one of them. Wow. And Taco Hike, that pays tribute to the safety of the legend cars. And we've talked about this before. Well, speaking of the pace car, Dave Terrell out there at Langley took a bunch Good of the kids day. out. Yep, took a bunch of the kids out. Matthew, uh, last week when we were there, and his sister, and Matthew's dad, Todd, and my son, Kyle. And they said it was my son uh, uh, and, and Matthew share one thing in common. They're not scared very much. Right. And my son said it was the scariest thing in the world he ever mm -hmm. heard. And I said, what was that? He said, all those cars behind me, Dad. And Cameron kept coming up beside us, waving at us. And his car was really loud. And I felt like we better get out of the way. <laughs> Cameron was having fun with the pace car and the kids being in the, in the pace truck. So that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Alan McNish was the first was one. Was the first one. And that that was the one with Michael Waltrip's car. No, no, Michael Waltrip's car was the second back. Mm. <clears throat> Two hundred thirty miles an hour. That's that's. It not. I thought it. Well, I thought it was the first one. He was in the fifty eight car, right? No. Yeah. No. They were the, the second crash was Michael's and his car. Hmm. Trivia question for you. Go ahead. Who paid their NASCAR fine and penalty? Rusty Wallace. There again, missed his opportunity. You watched the show last week. No, I just knew that. I know all that stuff. There again, missed his opportunity. We were trying to think of that last year. We knew somebody Did had done it. Did you want to know something? You just asked me. You know, that sounds like something the, the no. Dallas Mavericks owner would have done. Exactly. Rusty was so ticked off. He was we, we have, if, if we, Who if, counted them? <laughs> Who, Who rolled them? Uh, they, they went to the bank yeah, <laughs> on yeah. them. I guarantee it. If you send them UPS, it probably, probably costs more, right? right. Uh-oh, somebody's calling in. Oh, that's probably Rusty. That's probably Rusty. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, y'all quit talking about me. Just because Kleenex is on my son's car don't mean he's got to be like that. That's right. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> See, I like that, son. I like that. Well, Roman's racist, they're, right? They're, they're stirring the pot over here tonight, Cameron. <laughs> what it sounds like it's yeah, all good see. it's all good they're i'm just trying to bring the, the ratings up i mean come right. on it's done with love that's right that's right so it's so uh, funny who we got we're down to know who it is it's uh gonna be brian morehouse oh. it's got my buddy brian on there not yet now you do hey brian hey how you doing roger pretty good you got matt you got terry o'connell and you got kevin adams on the front row here with us tonight I got you. How y'all guys doing? Good. Great. How are you? How was supper? Got my bags packed. I'm ready to come to Virginia and see some racing down there. When are you going to be here? Uh, come in tomorrow night and uh, leave uh, Monday. Hopefully I uh, get out there and enjoy a little bit of the area while I'm there. Yeah, yeah. Every time he gets out here, we can never hog tie him down. He's always got something rolling. Well, yeah. I told you in my email, man, you make sure you find me this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can find you. I know where to find you. He was texting me. I was down there trying to get the guy in the car, and he's like, hey, do you need a cart? I'm like, yeah, I'd like to have a cart, but Matt's already got me one set up. So <laughs> it's, uh, I tell you what, we're really looking forward to coming in. I was down at uh, Research and Development today, and uh, I think we've got like 28 or 30 cars uh, right now that you know we're planning on having down there. Cool. Wow. cool. Now, those Good. who don't know, Brian Morehouse is a NASCAR official. Uh, this weekend, he will be part of the official group at the K&N Pro Series at Langley Speedway. What the, And you do a lot of the other divisions as well, Brian. Yeah, I've um, been doing a lot of cup. Uh, here lately, I got the, my first all-star race. That was uh, a lot of fun. And uh, the showdown before, before the all-star race, got to do that. Been doing a lot of Richmond and Martinsville and uh, Michigan and yeah, I've been doing all of them. It seems like uh, Southern Modifieds, uh, but as you know, we're on our break right now, so uh, I get to go play around with uh, all the other divisions. Did you make it out to Kansas? Uh, no. no. Where was I that weekend? I mean, you were texting back and forth. Uh, yeah, you dog. I was Chicago. Oh, you went, that's right. You were in Chicago. I was in Chicago, and you were in Kansas, and I was like, I'm going to be there tomorrow. <laughs> Yep, uh, and I wasn't. <laughs> uh, didn't have to go out there, and uh, Chicago, we ran in late through the night, but we really had a great time this weekend down at Gresham, mm -hmm. the k &N Pro Series. Right. I think we had 30 cars, and uh, I'm going to tell you what, uh, if you've never been to Gresham uh, Speedway down in uh, Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, Dan Elliott, Bill Elliott's brother, runs uh, the place, and it's owned by the Greshams, one heck of a nice track. That's right. I, I've heard that. I've heard it's a really, really great place to race. What's the length of the uh, track? Much. Yeah, we really had a good time. We had 30 cars. Uh, I'm not sure when it's going to be shown on speed. It'll either be tomorrow night or next week, I imagine. But uh, it's it's going to be one race you definitely want to see. And we're expecting the same thing down there at Langley. Mm -hmm. You know, last year at the Southern Modifieds, we came down there and uh, packed the house. Had a good uh, turnout, and everybody really enjoyed it. The hospitality that they received from Bill Mullis and his whole staff, Matt, y'all treated us like uh, gold. I told these K&N guys we're not going to know how to act after uh, we come down there this time. Yeah, there, there was a lot of the drivers I talked to. They said that if, if they could, they'd be here every weekend. I love Langley. It, it's, it's just that yeah. everybody kicks it up an extra notch that they don't see anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, it, last year, speaking for the Southern Modifieds, and guys told me they, they just loved it. It's, it's funny because the officials that I run across nowadays are like, oh, are y'all guys going to uh, Langley? You know, and it's like the way Bill Mullis put on a feast for us and took good care of us and everything. And it it was great. I mean, the facility's nice. Uh, the whole area for Langley is really great. Hopefully, uh, from what I've been hearing, um, I got the weather report from my mom today. Uh, she yep. texts me, and my mom's texting me now. Can you believe that? Uh, uh, that's a scary that the point. rain will not be there Saturday. So I don't know where she got her uh, weatherman's degree, but uh, we're hopefully no rain. Awesome. We're, it, it's awesome. looking good. We're not going to say the R word here on out. Mm -hmm. Okay. No R word, but it is looking good at this present moment. 
We have a saying around here, if you don't like the weather, stick around for 20 minutes. It'll change. <laughs> I, used to, I used to live there and uh, work for Dominion Power. So uh, oh. I know how in a blink of an eye, a storm could roll in. But I've never seen a place as bad as Kansas. Oh, I know. Last yep. year, it was the most beautiful day I'd seen in, in many of months. And all of a sudden, somebody said, oh, my goodness. And it was a little teeny black cloud. A little teeny black cloud. Thing, that that cloud put us on a two-hour delay for the trucks. And I saw hail the size of golf balls. So, uh, oh, those are little ones. <laughs> those are little ones? <laughs> yeah, I've seen them the size of softballs, and I'm not kidding. We don't call them golf balls. We call them lug nuts. Lug nuts. <laughs> yeah. A different type of hail. I, I've literally seen them the size of softballs. Oh, you're kidding. No. Well, I'm going to tell you what, we're, we're going to hope that it's going to be perfect weather. Um, guys are coming in Friday. Uh, they're going to be setting up, um, I think Langley's having uh, something over there in the, I don't know if y'all call it the city center. Yep. No, it's where the, it's where, let's, let's put it old school. Let's go old school. The old Hampton Mall area. How does that sound? Yep. Um, because that's what I know it as. Ham Coliseum. Yep. Or Coliseum Mall. You, uh, yeah. We're going to be having a, a little car show down there, trying to uh, draw up, you know, some attention and everything, and let people know about the Kane and Pro Series. Uh, some of the top-notch drivers want to be down there, from what I've heard. As you know, we've got uh, a young kid that's really great, Max Gresham. Um, he's a uh, his development driver. Yep. And uh, we've got we just got so much talent. I mean, there's a young kid by the name of Daryl Wallace Jr. Yep. Awesome. I saw this kid when I was 13, well, when I was 13, when he was 13 or 14 years old racing, and I followed him, he's about 18, 19 years old now, I guess, and he's with the diversity program with Revolution Racing. This kid is going to be something, and he yep. is, I'm telling you, top-notch kid, great race car driver, and really put on a great show this weekend, him and Max. You know, you got Corey, Corey uh, LaJoy, Randy LaJoy's son, Coleman Presley, um, Robert Presley's son. So you got a lot of kids in this division that come from talent. Yep. And we're really looking forward to it. I really, uh, Chase Elliott, there's Bill Elliott's son. Chase I actually Elliott. got to talk to him this weekend when I was doing inspections on his car. Really great kid. Uh, he was just down there with the, what was it, the Pro Cup? Yeah, I was down here with the Pro Cup. Did, did a very good job, by the way. He, he, uh, he was telling me, you know, about the track and everything. I was like, yeah, it's my hometown. So, uh, yeah, so we're really looking forward to coming on in, looking forward to seeing y'all guys. Uh, hopefully we won't be as busy as we were with the Southern Modifies, and we'll be able to sit down and chat a little bit and see how, how everything's going with everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, when you get in tomorrow night, let's go do dinner. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll see what time I get in. Um, I'll give you, I'll shoot you a text, and uh, we'll definitely have to do something on there all day Friday. I should be out the track by, I guess, around 2 or so. And, um, you know, we'll be there all day Saturday. You got it. We, we will definitely catch up with you, Brian. Awesome. Uh huh? I said I'll, we'll definitely catch up with you. Okay, we'll definitely do that. And uh, thank you all for uh, letting me come on the show and everything. And I, I hope everybody can come on out. We're praying for great weather. And we're praying for uh, some, some great racing out there this weekend. Uh, I think we're going to get them both. Thank you, man. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. And y'all got to take care. All yeah, right. Sir. We'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Right, Besides, his mom said it wasn't going to rain. That's right. Well, if your mom tells you something, you can. She put the voodoo on Taco, the Taco, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. We're, we're going to let, actually let you go here because we're about done. We're going to talk a little bit here to Terry and all that. So you, but you, you got him, some sponsors. You had him hold on That's just right. so you tell him goodbye? <laughs> well, I'm, no. Yeah, I didn't want to leave without him asking his sponsors and all that. Right. Well, he's in the pool relaxing anyway. So yeah, yeah, so he's just sitting here well, listening. Kind of, when we get back, find out how his dad made out with Tom in the car down. I, you know, I had a vested interest in that part. <laughs> well, how did he make out, Cameron? What's that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> We've lost control of our own selves here, so don't pay you attention. You know how it is, Cameron. Right. He's been here enough. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're looking forward to you doing a good job out there for Matthew on Friday night at Southside and then again Saturday at Langley. And, uh, and, and say hello to your dad for me, seriously. I can do that. He's, he's hard at work. We just pushed the car up out of the shop. So maybe now we can work on some of my stuff. There you go. There you go. Uh, Fantastic. It's all about me. Well, go get that so. car done. And uh, like I said, tell your folks, said hi, and um, we'll be at least seeing you Saturday. There you go. Well, we'll try to put on a good show Friday and uh, – Bring some momentum back to the track on Saturday for another good show, and uh, looking forward to watching the K and N's. That's for sure. Awesome. Yeah, that'll be awesome. that'll be a good night.
So hopefully we can uh, win the first one before that and give Matthew a trophy to hold on to, and we'll all be smiles for the second one. There you, Absolutely. There you go. I'm sure he's watching and listening right now. I'm sure he's smiling big time. I know he's been to sleep with your trophy many a night so far. So uh, he's got about four or five checkered flags, and the fan blows just perfect when he gets ready to lay his head down at night. And I think right now that's his inspiration to get through chemo each week. And Cameron, I can't thank you enough personally from my family to yours. And on behalf of the Hare family, just uh, what an inspiration you are to that young man right now, along with all the other drivers who are associated with Racing for Hope. That's what we want to be, is inspiration, you know. The kids need uh, all they can get to get through life as it is nowadays, you know. I, when I met the wife and she had kids, I said, you know, if we can just get the kids through high school, I feel like as a parent we've done our job. Yeah, that's it. And well, nowadays, my, my, <laughs> sometimes you wonder if Eva's done after that. <laughs> My mother would tell you it's not. Believe. Yeah, mine would too. God rest her soul. Same here. <laughs> all right, Cameron, take care of yourself, bud. Okay, we'll talk to you all later. You guys bye have bye. a good evening. All right, all right we'll see you this bye. weekend. Bye-bye, Cameron. Bye-bye. Bye. Awesome. What a class act. Yeah, he's a good kid. He really is. Talk, he is. I don't, I thought, uh, he told me he was too old to drive in the next series. I looked at him, I said, what do you mean? 37? 36, oh, really? 37, wow. yeah. He doesn't say yeah. it at all. But... I mean, if you're a winner, you're a winner. It doesn't matter. It Age doesn't matter. No you know. boundaries at all. So I don't know. I think I scared him a little bit talking about going up there testing the nationwide car. But we ought to keep that. We're, are we on the air? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're on the air. <laughs> He's <laughs> um, supposed to give me a sign so I can mute. Right. Right. I, I, I have to I'm say not good it. with that mute thing. <laughs> oh. exactly. exactly. Once it's rolling, I don't mute it. I mean, that's the fun part about this show. That's if fantastic. It gets thrown out there. Oops. I mean. We've had some big oopses go, too. Yeah, well, <laughs> it is what it is. Sound familiar, Terry? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Terry and I have talked about it, and I age does not no. matter. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And, and I got two prime examples. Steve Kinzer. Sammy uh, Swindell. Sammy Swindell. Who else? Danny Lasowski. Danny Lasowski. Uh, Mark do you Martin. want better? Mark Martin. Sonny Hutchins. Sonny Hutchins. Sonny Hutchins did it. Oh, how old? Am I just show my age there. Red Blind in one eye, drove red, one hand, hang another one. Farmer. Red Farmer. Red oh. Farmer. It does Glenn not Glenn Wood. Matter. It has nothing to do with it. Glenn that. Wood. Glenn Wood. Yeah. I mean, he won, what, 13 races in the convertible division? Right. Right. I mean, <laughs> that one flies so well these days, right? No roof on top of the car in NASCAR. I just, <laughs> I, I just watched Steve Kinzer win a race at Maybe Lakeside not. Speedway right. two weeks oh, ago. Stuff. He had broke his arm. He had pins in his mm -hmm. arms. He, had, he still had the scar, and it was still stitched up. And was out there winning. Same as Fidel won Saturday night. What? Well, yeah, uh, Knoxville. Yeah, Sammy won that next Knoxville. Saturday. Night. We were at the cart division on <laughs> Sunday at Langley, and there was a driver out there that was—I don't want to say his age, but let's say he was well past eighty. Mm -hmm. And that suit, the track was a hundred and sixty. You talking about Troy? <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's just yeah. wrong. I know Troy. <laughs> I know Troy real well. But you could act like there was a whole bunch of them out there. And you had no, to I know, no, Troy's a great guy <laughs> and so out there sad. and loves it and does yeah. it. He does. And I know his age. It, I listened to this. Yeah. It was so funny. It'll um, surprise you. you. Listen, we were, we were, oh, I, I know too. And so we walked by and, and bless his heart, he'd come out, he unzipped his racing suit and he was in his truck and I looked over there and I, I kind of nudged from one of my friends. I said, look over there. He's sleeping. And he down like it. I said, I'm going to go there and give him my card. I said, don't you dare. Look how old he is. He's peaceful right now. I said, well, shouldn't somebody check and make sure everything's all right? <laughs> Troy, you're out there, buddy. I love you. <laughs> so one, of, one of the great so guys. He's yeah. another one that Still, would give you I mean, the shirt off yeah. your back. Absolutely. Right. Out there, just driving the go-kart. And, and he yeah. did real well. I, 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 I paid attention. Yeah. I think he won. Yeah. Yeah, Troy, right. Troy does. I love this well. car. He had those orange shoes on, which is the color for leukemia, like your right. shirt yeah. today. Yeah. And, uh he drove an orange car, and we walked over and told him that. And uh, Matthew got to shake his hand, and I think cool. it scared Matthew a little bit to know that somebody was that old out there getting it done. I said, "Son, don't be scared. You no, might be scared if he was behind you. He's, this was all about." Paul Newman. Paul Newman. Oh, was Paul Newman was in his seventies racing. Twenty-four hours of Daytona won yep. it. My yep. daddy was sixty-five, still winning midget races. Well, a lady yeah. passed me Kicking on the road. Back. I swear she was 110, and she was flying. Yeah. The road. No, well, she had both her blinkers on, so it was. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Coming through. Let's Lord, little old lady from Pasadena. Now we're starting to age. Yeah. Little old lady from Hampton. Well, the fact that you Hampton, knew Sonny, yeah. Sonny Hutchins surprised me. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, well, Ray know. Hendricks did it. 
into his 60s. Sure, I, absolutely. I, I wish I could remember how old my father was. It's called was desire. He was racing. As long as you have the desire. Yeah, you so your physical uh, age does he not. He was in his 40s when I was born. Sure. And well, he was still racing when I was up into my teens. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. We talk about this often. This yeah, is something we, we talk do. about often. This is like people want to pigeonhole the age thing. It's just crazy that we do that. It's well, I think age is a frame of mind, just like time. Absolutely. You know? it's what you i got to keep remembering how old I am because I think I still ate can in 19 years. All Thank you. Bobby Kinzer's still running up in Indiana. Yeah, yeah. Steve's dad, yeah. and I guarantee he's... Oh, jeez. He's, he's 76, 77. I was going to say, yeah, Easy. mid to late 70s. Yeah. Wow. And these are not asphalt nationwide cars. These you are full-blown monster sprint long. cars. Right. Something that works your ass off. Oh, yeah. Oh. Total physical. Knock your brains out. Yes. Nice bite. You know about all of that. Yeah. 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 You, you drive them, too. Look, look, look oh, yeah. She, that, Terry, I'll give you a little background. She's got over 500 wins. She's got five national championships. Wow. You talking about me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did she drive for Junior Dunleavy? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. A little Holly Meyer car. No, I drove the um, True Cure car. Did you know? Mm -hmm. Did you know Patty Moise back then? Yeah, and uh, Ernie Irvin and I were were teammates on, with uh, I, it, You know, a woman drove the fastest unofficial lap in NASCAR. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah. Were you there that day? Talladega? Patty Moise? 112 miles an hour? Sure did. Yes, she did, she buddy. Out. Now, uh, oh, we, we, are, we might be... Are we on the air again? Yeah, we're still <laughs> on the air. It never went off. Well, well let me tell you, the first driver that Kimo Sports had was Roger Sawyer, mm -hmm. her uh, her brother-in-law. Brother right. Elton, of course, he Elton. went on to be the team manager for Red Bull for a while. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember Roger, he had he drove it like a modified when he came out of turn four right. at Martinsville. I thought it was going to be one of the shortest racing careers that we all had. <laughs> um, exactly. but, but we came back and said, how's your sister-in-law driver? <laughs> she, right. You know, that was the run a joke but uh yeah patty was a she was a wheelie yeah. so she was pretty good 500 yeah. wins my goodness that's well, a that's lot carts midget sprint cars still 500 midgets, anything yeah yeah that's 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 the thing to be cherished absolutely i know so what made you get out of it um back in <laughs> you go fast again yeah i'm working on a full-blown american Le Mans sports car team with dick barber who's won the mall three oh, times dick barber school of racing no, it's a different Dick, Dick Barber. It's Skip Barber's cool. Dick Barber oh, that's right. is, that's uh, right. is the guy who runs the, the teams and um, got a couple of sprint car deals in the works. Got that's exciting. Stock car stuff. Yeah, we're just getting back in it. Got a. So when's the last time you were on the track? It's probably back in uh, before Thanksgiving. You know, we're working on some stuff. To get back in. So we got a full. We're working on a full full. Full deal for 012 in a couple of races for this season. Awesome. So we're chasing sponsors. You know how that goes. Well, maybe one day we can get racing for hope on, on something you're We'd driving. We'd love to do it. it. We got a couple of Grammy winners on as partners on the team. And that's we, awesome. I can't tell you. I can't tell you on here. Yeah, that's right. Well, would, I can't. We'll talk about all that later. Yeah, that's right. would taser me if I said that out loud. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of cool. Alan McNish was the one that Alan we were, we, we were uh, trying at the Le Mans race. By the way, I don't know if anybody. Uh, if, how many of you watched the 24 Hours of Le Mans? Did you watch any of it? Some of it. On speed? All the but Aud 18, I think. I got Audi did a commercial with Alan McNish. It's about being an athlete. Oh, really? And, and it's, it's one of the most impressive commercials I've ever seen. Did you see this one? Yeah, the one where it's showing about Where he's up there talking to it. That is an awesome yeah, it's, commercial. It's, the commercials Man, I'm sure should do something like that. Well, they they got the money for it. Why wouldn't they do something? I mean, that was yeah, the perfect. Just got a it was the perfect. Grand the other day, I mean, hey. yeah, that's true. They got Who'd they Tommy get 150 grand from? Like, they probably the still Kyle got Bush that 10,000 pennies from Rusty, don't you think? <laughs> no, I guarantee they gave don't it back know, to him. Don't you know? Don't you know that galled little bill? <laughs> when his next check? Don't you know? Darn right it did. Oh, you know it. There was a point to be made. Oh, well, it, did anybody so. watch the Tony Stewart? I did watch it last night when I got in. Well, the swapping seats. Five last night with morning. Lewis Hamilton and Tony Stewart. Oh, yeah. Was that neat? Are, are, are we going to see a, a Lewis Hamilton NASCAR car he here soon? A, he, he was blown away by it. Yes. And Could he you, did a great job, yeah. too. He went faster than Tony Stewart. Well, the track was drying out, too. Well, but, still, but he still, went faster. He was just stoked over doing it. I mean, he was like, oh, my God, this is like, what was the word he used? 
awesome. No, it was like <laughs> some British word was like uh, crazy, but he's like, oh my god. Oh, he he just yeah, he yeah. was all he was it too. all up and about. Yeah, he was wheeling it. And Tony went faster than yeah. Lewis did because the track was drying, was drying out. out. Yeah. In in the in Formula the one Formula One car. So it was cool, but oh, yeah. I I think you're gonna see another. I think he would come over here and do it. I, 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 yeah, I think I he think would. He would uh, to the dream to have a little bit more. Tony invited him to it. Oh yeah. To run dirt next year. Well, I, 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 I think Lewis could do it too. Uh, I like Justin. And Justin finished what fourth or third. Fourth? Third. 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 He finished third. And this is what first time he went out there. Dario Frank. He oh, was yeah, there see, this but, year. But but Justin Algar. So who's Justin? Yeah, he's, he's a dirt track. He's racer. a dirt track racer. He he's knows. Got he ain't happy until he's looking and seeing it come around. Are we done? We're still rolling. rolling. I, thought, I, thought we were um, I thought we were back home. Yeah, I was going to go ahead and yeah. start cussing. No, um, awesome. <laughs> don't no stop. I'm sorry. You want to throw something out there? No, no, no. I know better. Uh, that's right. Know. Matthew's still watching, no, no, guys. No, no, no. <laughs> with a, with a what time is it? We, we do watch <laughs> it. It's, it's, it's a couple minutes after 8. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. We're good. We, 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 By the way, I don't know if Karen. I have a set end time. I want to give a shout out to Karen Smith. Karen Smith? Yeah. She went to the prelude. She just sent me a Facebook message. I got to get back with her, but she's a big smoke fan. Yeah, yeah, Tony yeah. Smokies, but she well, wants us to share. I got a, I got a, I got a Tony, I got a Tony story signals. for you. Stuart yeah, Stuart I got a, signals. We'll do they, that one they, off the air. Now those those people, they like to get in here, especially oh, when we have anything sneak that's in. related to Tony. Oh yeah. Like when we had Justin Jarrett on that one night. Remember all of them that showed up for that? Right. Oh my gosh. I want to give a shout out to Sean Schauber. He's one of the cart drivers out there on Sunday, and he was one that came up and gave the first trophy to Matthew. Uh, he won one of the first races, and uh, he was so moved by Matthew's situation that he he uh, ran up to the skybox and found us and brought the, the trophy up there. It took me a little while to get this picture because I had to dry the tears out of my eyes. This is a good-looking picture right here, and I wanted to give a shout-out oh, to him. Great. What a class act he is. Uh, he also wanted me to mention uh, Bill Maynard. They call him Pop Pop. Sean says he wouldn't be in racing if it wasn't for him. Um, and so uh, just want to thank uh, Sean Schauber for uh, just being such a class act and a good representation for NASCAR. Mm, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. It's that kind of joy mm. that keeps Matthew alive, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The, the greatest people on earth are people in racing. Well, They're just the we were, yeah, people. we were talking about we, that earlier. That's why I brought this cause. I, I yeah, mean, you know, amazing. we were just sitting here talking about it. It's the only sport in the world where you can actually go bar something from somebody before the start of it so you can win. It's amazing. And it's not a, it, and it isn't like there's not a lot of money involved these no. days. Yeah. And everybody does I it. I can tell you that. Too. Everybody does it. Everybody transfers that yep. back and forth. I mean, I've, yep. I've sat there before and loaded the whole engine. Oh, yeah. And that it engine. wasn't your best one, though, right? I only had one. <laughs> it was a good one. Well, though. where did that leave you? <laughs> he actually won the next week. Yeah. It, it was a non winner's race, so we wanted to borrow the entry. Awesome. I've actually, I tell I, Matthew, I appreciate this. I've actually loaned Sheldon Kinzer a right rear tire at West Memphis, Arkansas for a non wing USAC event, and he outran me. Well, it did that. He it, finished first, I finished second. That, that tire wouldn't have mattered. Sheldon would have whipped your ass anyway because well, he. We, we ran the, it was a 50 lap event, and he chased me for 49 laps yep. and put a slide job on me and won. I was so mad I couldn't see straight. <laughs> Sheldon was one of them guys. He though, was a good guy, though. I loved him. He was drop dead gorgeous to look yep. at, too. Oh, that's what made you really mad, well, yeah. right? And the thing about it, he sent. <laughs> that's what. See, right. now I didn't buy all coming by. Come on by. <laughs> yeah. but he sent. Uh, he. Uh, I. We both had Hoosier deals, so it was, you know. I, I said, but he sent Chuck Amati. Yeah. Over, to get the tire from me. I know you talking he, about. Because he was afraid to like. I would not loan it to him, but he came over with it. Like, oh yeah, we can have that tire. Sheldon was was a guy that showed up. Who died of cancer? He did. He died of cancer. Yeah. And. But when he showed up, you were looking to see who was going to finish second. A double backflipping BA. He was he yeah. was he was something. Yeah. Non wing driver. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you know he got a, a couple of Indy five hundred starts. But, That's awesome. But he was a good guy. He, but he was he was kind one of, of the great. Yeah, one of the great guys. One of the great guys. Always wore a really white pair of sunglasses. He was cool. He was cool. Yeah. Good always looking. wore a navy yeah. pea coat. Yeah. New, yeah. 
So, so anyway, those are great stories. Absolutely. And we got a few more we can share after. Yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, we can tell you some after. I got some great Ricky Stenhouse stories too behind the scenes. He finally got his win. Well, let, I got uh -huh. a story for you guys. Um, this is back, uh, well, let's say '94. Um, Curtis was uh, he, Curtis Key was he's scared to go across bridges. He just won't go across the bridge. Um, that's just the way it is. So he stayed home, and we went up to Dover, Delaware, and uh, Bobby Hamilton Jr. was driving the car for us. And we just got a new engine from Horn Janine's, and uh, we forgot to uh, check. I'm saying we a lot, okay? I'm not going to take any ownership. It's the race car we think. Yeah, we think, until we get to the commentary part, and then I won't lay it all in my lap. But make a long story short, if I can, um, uh, the car pulls into the pits. We were pitting out a sequence. Bobby Hamilton Sr. was driving the car. And uh, the car came into the pits, and I was the catch can man, and I was supposed to make sure everybody's hands and feet were out of the way, and the car got filled up with gas. That's all I'm focused on. All I'm focused on. Well, all of a sudden, there was this big fury of activity, and the next thing I knew, everything was over. Fire extinguishers, and I didn't even know what happened. So I'm, I'm dejected. We pushed the car back to the, to the trailer. I'm just disgusted. Brand new engine filled with fire extinguishers. Not the way you want to spend your afternoon. First two people that come over there are Dale Sr. and Kenny Schrader. And they come over there and they console me. So I get home and I'm, I'm just totally dejected. I want to see the interview because I figure like we've got to be on TV because we pitted out a sequence. And sure enough, King Richard was calling the race. And he is my idol, always has been. Uh, but this is what he said. As we pulled into the pits and the car burst into flames and I was steady putting gas in the back end, he said, you know, I've seen a lot of dumb things in racing, but I have never, ever seen anybody so determined to put gas in the back end when the front end's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> We're not on air, are we? Yes, yeah, <laughs> we are. Great. That's out there. That's yeah, great. so uh, no, now you know why I'm on the other side rather than on it's that side of the side. wall. Okay, yeah. Mark, Mark, Mark ought to appreciate that. <laughs> Mark would. I, I, you know, every time I'm feeling really good about where I'm going in life, uh, I play that. It's called my humility tape. You know, it just keeps me brings you back to reality, yeah, yeah. doesn't it? And then yeah. it keeps right. me from wanting to go across the wall again, too. That's Mark's uh, supposedly coming down for the race this weekend. Is he? Oh, great! Okay. Fantastic. Uh, he used to be the field man for Timothy Peters, mm -hmm. and uh, his knees started to get wearing on him. He used to race at Langley in the Enduro Series, big time. People don't realize how heavy 22 gallons of fuel is. It's eight. eight. It's eight. Yeah, eight pounds per gallon. Right? Six point one oh four. Oh, it's less than what? Oh. Times twenty two. Is, is this? A, are we have twenty two. I didn't know. Are we have math quiz now? No. no, no so what is that? No. The reason now, I know that. What is that? How much is the, the reason? Is, huh? How much is the weight total then? Twenty two pounds times right, six point one oh four. Yeah. The percent. reason I know that is is now when it because it's it's not regular gas racing fuel ethanol, anymore. It's now is, ethanol. Which is lighter. Which is lighter? Yeah, the one, stuff we had was a jet fuel, wasn't it? One hundred four, what was one ten, or what was it back in? Oh, oh yeah, it was, it was racing fuel. One ten, one twelve, right? One eighteen sometimes. You used to could get it at, at certain gas stations. Yeah. You remember yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I used to go to Hopewell all the time. I take Hopewell. Three fifty-five yep. gallon drum. Lakeside Park. And they have a, they have a gas company out there, and I go out there and get the purple stuff. And yeah. One hundred fourteen octane. Yeah. We were uh, in our cars. My son's at home watching this. He, he That's all he ever wants. My, my hey, dad. can you get the good juice for the car? Good juice. <laughs> the good I like that. Good can you juice. get the good juice, Dad? Dad used to run an aircraft juice. fuel, and that was 118, but they had to run stainless steel tanks because yeah. it would corrode the regular. Right. Yeah. So it was a keg. Of, it was a beer keg turned into a Everybody also had tank. a fruit jar of other stuff over there in the corner. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we've had some <laughs> stuff <laughs> really before. Really high test stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that, that was, was the that, that's, where, that's where NASCAR came from, right? Like, right. Yeah. You, you, you'd sip a little and pour some in the back of the car and keep on getting it, right? Let's see, if a little bit of work. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more was even better, right? Junior Johnson. Oh, yeah, Junior. There you go. Oh, JJ. Great stories. Yep. Tommy drove for Junior. Yeah. A lot of yeah. people don't remember that. He had the Budweiser sponsor. I think that's why he was so ornery by the time we got him. He'd already been up on top of the mountain and got pushed down. And he wanted oh, to get yeah, back up in a hurry. Irritated. Yeah. Right. I remember one time he told me, he said, well, I ain't driving for points, so I'm parking this piece of junk. <laughs> I mean, what do you say to that? Well, Tommy <laughs> Kohler's he here, Mullen's here. And, of course, you know, Mr. Petty was kind enough just walking on down and said, we'll take Kohler right on off your hands there, Thank Kevin you. Adams and Key Motor Sports. And uh, yeah. they did. They've held on to him for a long time, so they must have treated yeah. him a little bit better. And when the car wasn't going so good, maybe they just kept on going around the track, realizing that it's not always about the driver. It's more about yeah. It's more about getting the name out there to sponsorship. Yeah. I mean, there again, yeah. MatthewHair.com. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. you, you, you have so many times the drivers are out there, it's car crashes, they get pissed. They want to mm -hmm. just go to the 
trailer and not worry about it's not it. fair to your crew no, it's, it's not, not. not. It's not it's fair not. to your crew. And I, you know, I mean, if you've ever been to Rock and Ham and sat on that hot asphalt and eaten them hamburgers, they call the greatest things on earth. You, it, it doesn't agree with you about 160. When it gets around 160 all day and nothing works, and you change the shocks and springs and tires, and they're still whining and complaining. And then you want to park it. Yeah. 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 We could have done that at the beginning of the day rather than that yeah. in Just the middle of the start. road. Yeah. yeah. Just don't exactly. start. Please tell me you weren't like that, were you? Oh, no, I've, I've never given up. That's right. I, there you go. You don't get 500 wins by giving I, up. That's right. I will tell you that I will wear you down. <laughs> that's true. I will I wear you down. I, had to race I will wear now, you that, down. Speaking of which, that sounds like Jillian. You know, Matthew uh, has a, a sister named Jillian, and uh, she's a precious little thing. There she is in that little picture right there. We might have another picture from somewhere around hey, here. Hey, girlfriend. Her tongue but anyway, she, she's so special. But, uh, you know, Matthew gets a lot of attention, and so – when she, he's getting his, she wants hers. So we were out there, and she figured out that somehow that I had something to do with giving these trophies out the first race we were at. So I'm standing there talking to somebody, doing some sort of interview, and she's just steady pulling at my leg, Mr. Adams, Mr. Adams, Mr. Adams. She, I finally said, yes, Jill. And she goes, will you give me a trophy too? So we went on out there. We got one. So Matthew remembered this. Mm -hmm. So last time we went, he had a whole bunch of trophies. And Jill, he goes, can I carry one? He goes, not right now, sweetie. Not right now. <laughs> Not right now, not sweet. Right now. <laughs> These things are hard to come by. That's right. They are. That's right. Not for you, 500 no, of them. You know, My goodness. I totally get it. I so, what, you got a house for just for your awards and then the one you live in? It's pretty funny. I got this little office, got everything in it. But talking about these kids, I, write, I, I, just, I wrote a book, and, and I, I, had, I had a really good friend who had a couple of young boys. They were both five and seven. And uh, we went to Nashville to race one weekend, and um, I won. On, on Friday night, and the next night we're going over to Missouri to race. So next thing we know, we're going down the road, and the two boys had tied up, and they were death match for the trophy. Act one. Act, act one. <laughs> you know. So finally, my friend John, who it's his kids, he got them separated and got them over in the corner and gave one of them the trophy. The other one was sitting over pouting, you know, because he didn't have a trophy. So the next night we won, and we got a trophy. And, uh, and the one that I already had the trophy wanted it too, so he wanted two trophies. So it was death match trophy fight two. Finally, John got back there and separated them and put them on both sides. They both had trophies. And they were still sold up because they both wanted each other's trophy. It was the whole time. It was the funniest thing. Yeah, that, 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 that sounds like the Bush brothers right there. It, does. <laughs> it totally does. It totally does. You know, they're both teenagers yeah. now. Yep. They're great kids. Yeah. From, from kids now, Oh, yeah. Yeah. From the babies. Let, let's get out of here so we can tell yeah. some really good stories. All right. That's, that's <laughs> fine with me. I know I wore up my welcome. Oh, me too. And, Terry, you. Uh, Thank you, you for being on here. Oh, too. my pleasure. Oh, everybody got my my book is now an e book on Amazon. And it's, it's got, Kindle, too, right? Kindle also. Anything. Kindle. It's Kindle, iPad, iPhone, computer. You can just download it right off the end of whatever you do. There's an app on Amazon that just lets you dangerous curves, and uh, I've got all five star reviews on it, so it's all cool. That's awesome. And it is a great book. It's, it's one that you and, and yeah. I can attest. Right. You you pick it up. You will not put it down until it's you're done. It's a mystery novel. In a way, it's a bit of a mystery novel. It's a little novel. bit of everything. It's an action it. adventure. A lot of pictures. A lot of. It's got the, the, the ebook. It's got some. The, well, the ebook we put a lot of photographs in the back. Oh, we, did you? Yeah, we just oh, piled them in awesome. there. So, well, but yeah, it is a great book. It's on CDs. Well, Don, show a picture of uh, uh, of Matthew one more time, one more time. for uh, for everybody. Um, just remember Saturday night, and we're uh, going to say that one more time. Matthew Hare. I'll be glad to work yeah. with you on book sales for this too. Absolutely. Uh, www.matthewhare.com. Um, and it's H E A R E. Yes. Dot com. Yeah, and Matthew spelled like the book in in the Bible. M A T T. H E W. Yep. Uh, that's what it's all about for me, and that's what the foundation is going to be about: bringing awareness to childhood cancer. And as far as I'm concerned. When NASCAR thinks about childhood cancer, that boy's face is going to be the one. That's awesome. the one. Okay, we're awesome. going to put a face with the, the thing. All right. That's it. Well, thanks, guys, for everything. I'd like Peace to out. thank everybody for listening to Let's Talk Racing tonight. We had a good time, and we should do it more often. Ha-ha. Yes. Wrong. Ha -ha. <laughs> Once a week. Woo. Once a, a week's enough. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's get out of here. See ya.